What's up, brother? How's life, man? The live video is starting. How's life, man? How you been, Chad? Good, my brother. Good, yeah. My brother. Good, 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 I man. Hope the audio is good. Hopefully. We'll see. Uh, if anybody joins in, we'll see what they say, man. And you only have one mic plugged in, right? It should be better, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so, man. I think I got this down now, finally. Like, you know, I'm I'm old, man. Fifty years old. This is look. When I was young, we didn't even have cable TV, dude. So, <laughs> what are we gonna talk about tonight, man? What's on our? I know we're gonna talk lowers. We're gonna talk tackle. We're gonna try to keep it at one uh, type of lower. Springtime coming. We just did crankbaits. I don't know, dude. Crankbaits is hard to beat in the spring. Very hard to beat. Spinner baits. I, I was supposed to talk spinner some... baits with Brian Dyson last night, and then uh, like he was buying a new boat, and like things happened. I was, I've been feeling under the weather. And we just couldn't make it happen. We we're just gonna make it happen last night, but we probably yeah. will. What you got? Oh, you talk. You saw plastics. You gonna saw plastic on me, dude? Cause I see them in your hand. I know what that is. You got the shirt on for oh, one. Got yeah. Got yeah. I'm ready. How's the audio, fellas? Let us know. Yeah, let us know what's up. see if Rob's got any echo or not. Am I echoing again? No, I'm asking. Oh, oh, oh. Well, damn it, dude. I don't know. If I am, I don't know. I don't even know anymore. Dude, I just picked that one up, Chad, right there. Ooh. Yeah, Golden Shiner. The old reaction Vic. ovation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you know, well, this one's real old school. You know, everybody knows this one. Spook, the old spook. Mm -hmm. They just happen to be sitting on the shelf. Look, that's my juice. I'm going to show it for like two seconds and take it right back. Look at the size bag of that. That's it. That's all you see. <laughs> that was the juice right there, dude. <laughs> How's that? That's probably Dan, a lot better. Dan probably knows. Do it one more time. That's it. That's all you get. Anybody As you see, call? there's like 300 of them in there. Yeah. We good, uh, Chad? Or are they, are they having uh, audio? Uh, They're saying my microphone is very uh, quiet. You sound good on my end. But I, don't, I don't know what that. I don't know if that means anything. Hey, Dan, if you're still on, man, I ain't forget about you, brother. I got to get up there. Uh, I got to get up to the post office this weekend, man. You you worked at the same company that I work for, so you know how it gets during the week. Be too busy to get anything done. Yeah, I get up to you. Uh, I get up there this weekend and get that shipped off to you, brother. Hmm. Still, Still audio? I can't see any kind of comments or anything. Hello? So. Hello? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. It's picking up the mic. Dude, Chad, is there a way I can see the comments or no? A mouse right there somewhere. Uh, no, on StreamYard or StreamLabs, you could have. Uh, yeah, it wasn't working for me. And, and I got to apologize to everybody that are, is online. It's my fault we're going on so late. I got a call for work. And then Chad went to stream through Streamlabs, which I couldn't figure out and get working. And then we just wound up going with Skype. So we're coming in so late today because of me. Riverboat Rive. What can you do, man? Life is a gamble. I'll scramble for money. I might crack a smile, but ain't a damn thing funny. <laughs> Chad's like dead serious, dude. <laughs> Rob, can you hear me at all? Yes, sir. Hear you just fine. Did that fix it, any boys? Uh, 
Trying to bring this Skype back up now. We good, Dale? How's, How's that going? sound? How's, How's that sound? Right on. So the sound sounds better. Man, I'm telling you, the audio is always a struggle. Hey, if we're going to talk about uh, some spring break, uh, some, <laughs> God dang it, spring beat. Look what I got right here. This is the, uh, the guide to worms and lizards from the Bass Masters Time Life <laughs> book collection. Look at this. That's history right there, man. This is the guide to lizards. And if you don't if you don't throw a lizard, a Carolina Carolina rig lizard. So here's the thing about the Carolina rig that a lot of people don't understand. Before there was all this sonar and everything we have now, you used to be able to throw a Carolina rig out, drag it across the bottom and feel you could feel what's on the bottom without actually you don't have to see it you can feel it just drag that carolina rig across the bottom and then in maryland in the dmv area a june bug lizard it's fire man that's fire that's fire this time of year i've never thrown a lizard never do never actually have a whole i don't even i don't even own a pack of lizards dude oh i'm gonna bring you some dude i gotta actually uh i gotta move some stuff around but uh yeah, don't sleep on the lizard, Chad. Don't sleep on the lizard, dude. I mean, I'm sure there's a time and there's a place. This is the time. Well, springtime is. Look, yeah. the lizards. Hold on. I have, uh, I have some of these. I have some delicious drop shot baits right in front of me. Well, drop shotting is. Uh, so I'm old school. Chad's new school. So here's the old school lizards. Chad's got the new school drop shots. But check out that lizard box, dude. Oh yeah, yeah, man. Okay, so you're you you're serious about the lizard? Oh yeah, dude, I ain't joking, man. Yep, that's old school, but it's still that works. is old school. I really, I don't think I see too many people throw lizards anymore. I think every once in a while I'll find one uh, wrapped up in the bushes. <laughs> it's probably mine. <laughs> <laughs> it probably is one of yours. <laughs> dude, you you nailed it though, man. Now it's the drop shot, the shaky head. You know, times have changed. The drop shot, the shaky head, throwing a nice jig the spring. Oh, jig. That's different. That's still old school. That's still butter. That's still I mean, go-to. That's yeah. still that ish. That, that big without, fish without profile. To drop money in the uh, the swear jar, that's still the ish. <laughs> Can't go wrong with a jig, man. Nah, Can't go wrong with a jig. Uh, uh, yep, a jig. And there's something else I flipped that I do not care to talk about. I can't get the see that's what I was saying about these plano boxes. See how much trouble I'm having getting this shut? The Cast King is better. I'm sorry. I don't nobody likes Cast King. Their box is better. They took they knocked off Plano and made the box better. I'm sorry. That's it, the it, only it, time I think you'll ever hear somebody say that. It's the truth, man. <laughs> like I <clears throat> uh, I got I got it shut. So, so hey, we, we are we we're basically it's here in the next in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be time to put the boats in. Water temperatures are like 46, 47 degrees. We have any more consistent fifty and sixty degree weekend or uh, weeks? Nights. Well, the the I'll nights. That at night. Man. Yeah, and the uh, a little bit of some warmer nights too. Uh, they're definitely going to start moving up a little bit if they have not if they have not already. I was about to say. Time to go this weekend. I, I actually, it's you need to get out on the water this weekend. We all do, right? Yeah, it's about that time, man. Yeah, yeah. Once that those early, early warmer seems to really be the key. Is when it's when still you get warmer nights. It's still blade bay temperature. It's cold. It's cold as hell in the morning. It's still blade bay temperatures. Yeah, I went out front this morning, smoked a cigarette, I was freezing with my butt off. So it's still cold in the morning. Yeah. Once those nights get warm, though. That's really the, and then we have full moons like three times this week or something. So that's never good because you get a flood tide. So I don't think this week would have been the greatest, but I think in about the next two weeks, it's about to be on, man. It's about to be on. I don't want to give up too much juice, but 
head to that forbidden zone because it's about to be on. And I got to talk about this too. There you go. Where are you sticking that at? Deal. Yeah. Yeah. The hey, 40 look, East I, Fishing. I hope he's on, dude, because uh, it's about to get real with me and Andrew from 40 East Fishing. There, so. I actually got a text right here from the man. Let me see if I can find him. I was told to hook up with him for the night. He could have wound up naked because he had to work right uh, uh, Still driving. Uh, da, da, da. But I uh, got a man from uh, the, the pro uh, skateboarder himself, Mr. Rodney Jones, Pal Peralta, uh, posit uh, skateboard pro. And uh, he was like, me and him go way back. And he was like, man, if 40 East Fishing want to challenge me to a kickflip contest, he'll judge it and put it on his Instagram. So I'm just telling Andrew right now, I hope he sees this because I haven't texted him yet. Bring it on, man. That kickflip. You haven't texted him yet? I sent that to you I like. Have, I got, dude, today's been insane. Like, work. you know how it goes. You know how it goes because you, you were busy today, too. So you What's up, Gromster? But, uh, yeah, come on, uh, Andrew, bring it on, dude. I got Rodney Jones. What's up, Brian? Pro skateboarder Rodney Jones is going to judge this kickflip contest against me and you, dude. Let's do it, man. You you should be careful what you wish for, man. What's up, Little John? What's, What's up, Martin? Yeah. yeah, bro, we're talking kickflip competition at the Middle River Bass Flea Market this weekend between 40 East Fishing, Mr. Andrew Donahue, and legendary Riverboat Rob. Yeah. And uh, I got I got pro skateboarder Rodney Jones as a judge. Rodney Jones is going to judge it and put it on Instagram. So, and uh, I'll probably get charged. Well, Gromster says Donahue's got it. Please, man, bring it. Look, I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait. You don't even know. Like, bring it on, man. Bring it on. Bring it on. You have no idea. Dude's going to slap that kickflip in there. Dude, He's I gonna... literally just had a video not long ago where I do a double kick. You gonna do the kick flip, flip and then like land up on the curb? No, uh, yeah, that's easy. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit him with the uh, secret. I shouldn't even say this, and people probably only know. I'm gonna hit him with the kick flip under flip. Okay. Rodney Mullen special. Bro, you're gonna throw under flip. You gonna throw that tray flip at us? I could do. No, I'm not very good at 360 flips, to be honest. I gotta be honest. I can do double kick flips though, so that's pretty sick. 360 flips is Jason Lee. Never been a good. I've never been that great at 360 flips. So I hit him with the kick flip under flip, where you do a kick flip and catch it and flip it back the other way. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm gonna hit him with. That's gonna be the winning move right there. Or we can just take it to the stair set or the hand rail. I mean, bring it on, dude. Hey, what's up, Trick Tins? Bring it on, on. Trick Tins. Matt on, dude, Matt. I'm going to hit you up. I'm trying to get that hatch. If Matt's still on, hopefully my volume's better for you guys now. He's, he even said in the comments that my volume was low. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, I got to get up with him. He's building me a uh, hatch for my for my, uh, for my my boat. And me and Tony are trying to work out a deal where we're getting some wraps done. A lot of big stuff happening, dude. But look, this, none of this matters. The kickflip contest is what matters. Tired of this. Tired of Andrew. Talking shit. Bring it on, man. You're going to find out. Like, look, dude. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on, Andrew. Where you at, man? Is he online? Is he on? I'm about to text him. Tell him, get on here. Nothing in the comments. He's going to find out on Saturday. What they say on Big Lebowski? You got a hell of a day on Saturday. <laughs> it's so, all for fun, man. It's all for fun. So, beside that, my dude, we're going into that early spring right now. And. There's some certain tactics that work better than others, and in my opinion, it's still slow tactics. Um, like, I know you could, okay, so like, you really want to get into depth with that, like that's a whole entire different thing, but when you're still in those 40 degree water temperatures, those fish are still moving slow. Yeah. I like throw, you still, you can't go wrong with a blade. These temperatures, a Ned rig, rattle trap. drop shot. Yo yo in a rattle trap. Yeah. Dragging a jig. Big, Big football, football jig. jig. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dragging it across the body. Letting it sit. I shouldn't say dragging. Throw it out there where you think the fish should be and let it sit there for a painful, like 10 seconds can seem painful when you're letting a bait sit. 
Let it sit there and barely move it. Placement is key. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah, yeah. If you can find some um, offshore structure, definitely key. You know where me and you fish, Chad. Well, you know, Paul and them fish a lot of other places. Me and you fish pretty much exclusively where we fish. And uh, there's not a lot of offshore stuff there. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying. So, uh, it, yeah, it's, I was actually I was going to piggyback on that. There's not, in my opinion, it's kind of difficult to pinpoint fish sometimes where we fish because it's so shallow everywhere. Right. There is no deep water. Man. I mean, so, uh, but that that being said, does that mean where there is deep water means that that's where they all are? It doesn't seem to be. Like, I've been no. in the deepest spots. They don't seem to be there. They seem to just stay shallow. I definitely think they walk, They winter in four feet. Is Brian Dyson still on? Was Brian uh, on? Did you say Brian Dyson was on? Brian ask, was on, yeah. I'm going to ask Brian what he thinks if he answers back. Uh, but, uh, you know, Brian's fished that area even longer than me and you have. He's fished that for, especially his team, tournament partner, Tom. So maybe Brian will give us some juice. But uh, I'm pretty sure Brian would say don't look for deeper water, look for warmer water. At this time you know, of the year. A, a degree or two warmer. You find a spot that's got a little bit warmer. So what do they know the northern banks? Yeah, or whatever the rocky banks, sun heat. Rocky, rocks, northern banks, wherever the, you're getting the most sunlight. Mm -hmm. Maybe it gets a little bit more shallow. The water heats up a little bit more in those areas a little quicker. A couple degrees warmer. They go, you know, you know how it is. You're cold. You're gonna go sit by the heat or something like that. I just, yeah. dude, I hate fishing when it's cold. I know, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's kind of, it kind of sucks. Kind of it's your fingers, dude. Your whole hand and shit gets numb. Like you're just all wet. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> dude, but, but for some reason, I take some pride in. If it's like 40 degree water temperature, and you catch one. Like like Nick Nick Rogers, for example, caught that one in the snow. Nice bass in the snow. Got a cool nice ass bass picture. in the snow. Big bass. Look, look like a mission. Look, look like the Michelin Man. That's a good feeling, though, dude. That, 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 <laughs> oh hell yeah. Feel. That's like hell yeah. Hell yeah, though, so, like, that's kind of cool about it. But you are out there freezing your butt off and uh, all day. It's not, it's not, dude, summertime when it's a hundred and freaking 10 degrees could be worse, though. And that sun's just draining you. And it's so damn, even, it's so hot, the fish don't even want to eat. Like, it's, I mean, that could be worse sometimes, that heat, too. It can't, you know. Little John Hansen says he's on his way down to the Big O in Florida. Oh, nice, 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 nice. That'll nice. be a good time. Had done Okeechobee. Had like what, a hundred pounds there or something? Damn near a hundred pounds. It's a good time to go. That's for sure. No doubt yeah. about that. Good luck, man. Good luck. Good luck. So, so uh, catch him up, man. What's your preferred method right now, Mister Rob? What do you? If you're gonna go out this weekend. What are you, if you only had to bring two rods with you, what are you taking with you? A jerk bait and a jig. I think I would piggyback on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's being 100% honest. That's what I would take. I would, yeah. take, I would take a mega bass, uh, jerk bait, and then I would take a dirty jig, flipping jig, and that would pretty much be, I don't know, dude, because now I'm kind of starting to like get I would, into the swim bait thing. The Vision 110 and Yellow Perch. The Vision 110, maybe the 110 Junior, plus one. The plus one, yeah, it could get a little deeper. Yeah. And a Yellow Perch. Uh -huh. And then uh, a green pumpkin jig. Dude. I would probably throw a finesse. I would probably I would throw a finesse jig. No, not me. Hold on. Not like that. I would. Yeah. yeah. Like a missile finesse three H jig. Do I have one up here? No, I took it. Back. I took it downstairs. Uh, this is already rigged up, ready to go. You got to bear with me because it's like a this a flipping rod, so it's very long. It's like seven six or something. But ah, if I can get it off of here, oh, no, don't do that. Crap. There we go. Dirty jigs, flip a jig, the trailer, 
is a spicy beaver reaction of innovations. Well, let me go over this way, huh? Spicy beaver, green pumpkin with some red in it, dude. That, man, put that away. <laughs> on a uh, on a Dobbins Fury. Uh, you could have said what you were going to throw without dropping the freaking juice color. The Do- Dobbins Fury 7-6 flipping stick. Yep. I don't care what anybody says. The Furies are are a phenomenal rod for the price point. You cannot beat the you can't beat the the Fury for for the price point. Twenty pound test fluorocarbon. I mean, I go to work with this all day, dude. I could I could literally. I have a lot of patience. I'm not a truck and wine guy. I could literally just all day long, just because when I get that little tick and set that hook, dude. That's what I live for. Like I I'll, I'll pick it. The big part of the thing is, like, I don't know if people, like, a big part of it is knowing, like, hey, they're there. That's a great part about uh, sonar now, which I really don't use, but I've been fishing long enough in the same spots to know, like, I know they're there. And when you know that they are there, you can really slow down. Because you know they're there, you just got to get on the bike. Right. So, yeah, so I will stay there and, like, figure out a way to get on the bite and uh eat jig man a jig uh if i had to take three rods then i would throw a crankbait in there to a dt6 a dt6 uh i wouldn't even jump to a swimmer bait uh, uh a spinner bait yet but that would be coming next month and uh and that's it dude maybe maybe throw some soft plastics around uh but a crankbait a jig and 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 uh, um, jerk bait, dude. Now maybe you could tell me, but I'm dying to throw that uh, some of those swim baits. Dude. I've been buying swim baits, dude. I've been I've been on swim bait. I'm trying to get in the swim bait world, dude. I'm trying to enter the swim bait world, and I just got this one recommended to me by a good friend, Sea Bass. Man, this thing is just, dude. Like, I can't get over how sexy this thing is, dude. Mm. You know what it is. You told me about it. I don't even have no clue about this. The, the old Spro KGB. KGB. Man, look at that thing, dude. I know a little you bit about know. it. You already know. I ain't telling you. I know a little bit about it. I know a little Man. something about it. Dude, Not much, so I, but just a little bit. So I got one in my hands. I didn't realize how really awesome this thing looks, dude. Like, this is amazing looking, dude. Like, I can't... If I was a fish, you would catch me, like, every day. <laughs> like, like, I would fall for this every time. So. But I can't really... I really can't wait to try... What's up, Pete? Bro. Oh, my brother's on, Pete. Yeah, What's Pete's up? on. I can't can't wait to... Uh, like, I'm really looking forward to trying... I'm really try. actually looking forward to seeing you try that, too. As much as I... Uh... I know. Disapprove. It it, but I, yeah, but dude, that's got to catch him, dude. Look, look, Miles, look, Miles up here in the comments trying to make purchases from Martin before they even get to the fish and flea market. What, what's Miles buying? Dude, Martin says he has swim baits for sale. Oh. Well, look, how about, how about you wait until Martin gets up there and it's a free for all? Cause I might be interested in some of those. What kind of swim baits Martin got, though? I'm curious. I'm going to be interested, too, man. What you got, Martin? Martin's about to have an auction up here in this freaking show right now. Does Martin make his own swim baits, or these <laughs> are, like, this swim baits he's been stocking? Do you let Clint use these, spin bait, uh, uh, these swim baits, or is, uh, or is Clint not allowed to even... Clint ain't throwing no swim bait. He's throwing that, he's throwing that jitterbug. <laughs> the jitterbug, dude, don't get me started. The jitterbug will not leave me alone, dude. The jitterbug haunts my life, dude. <laughs> gotta get this, dude. I wanna, uh, 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 a couple of them. Uh, don't do that. That's a smallmouth bait. Smallmouth bait only. What do you think, man? Hey. Mm-hmm. What about this? You probably know this one, Chad. I know it's hard to tell on camera. Uh, look That's the that. Mega Bass SV3. There you go, brother. Yes, sir. Yep. Ain't no I, doubt. If you watched my last unboxing, you know I just picked up a couple. Are those all? <laughs> do you have any of the SV9s? 
I do not, dude. I have never thrown an SB9. How you like the SB9? Fantastic. Yeah? It's a phenomenal bait. Um, so there's different designs between the Mega Bass SV9 and the different three and what their and the SV3 and what their purposes are. I would I might have to go back and relook it up, but one or the other, I can't remember which it is. I believe the SV3 is designed to be burned more. Um, that makes sense because you have and, smaller blades and and it's good around wood. I yeah, can tell you how much it's really good around wood. The SV9 is a deeper, slower running. Spinnerbait. Oh, got you. I'm going to have to get some of the SV9. So I'm a big fan of the SV3. I'm um, a huge fan of that. So the only issue with the Mega Bass spinnerbaits that I find, and I've thrown a lot of Mega Bass spinnerbaits, they're really, really good spinnerbaits. They they don't fail. Like Their fail point is when the wire snaps, but until the wire breaks, they don't fail. Their blades really don't get snagged up. They spin every time. Uh, they're good. They're trailer. yeah. They're they're pretty decent through the grass. Honestly, I like their trailers. Kind of right out of the box, are pretty decent. Um, good hooks. The blades are like hammered blades. Uh, but the wire is light, and you can't horse bass with them. You cannot horse bass into the boat over and over again with a mega bass spinner bait. That light wire is gonna break on you every time. And at the price point that you pay for the spinner baits. Well, it's not worth it. Think, right? Yeah, yeah, they're thirteen, fifteen dollars for one of them. So uh, it's not worth it. You just net the fish and bring it up. Uh, me and Scuba Steve, he might punch me in the throat. Uh, me and Scuba Steve use them here and there. They're nice, dude. I love. Them. Hey, Matt, what's going on? Is that Matt from Trick Ten? Yeah, I'm. I'm looking at YouTube now. I see him on there. Facebook is what we monitor a lot of the time because uh, it's our main thing. Uh, but we're, I'm, uh, I'm staring at YouTube now. Dude, so I appreciate you joining, man. Dude, Matt, if you can hear me, man, I'm going to text you tomorrow. I'm ready to pull the trigger on that. If we're still good, uh, it's a go. Uh, I'll text you. I'll text you tomorrow. But yeah, let's make that happen, man. I need to get that done. So, so Matt's going to build me a hatch, uh, for my boat. And then what I plan on doing is aluminum deck and the rest and then hydro. Turbine. What's up, Steve? That, but. But Matt is, uh, Matt is uh, hooked me up, gave me gave me a good price. It's going to build me a nice waterproof hatch. Oh, uh, there he is. Now he's on Facebook. What's up, Matt? He's everywhere, dude. But, yeah, he's, he's building me a hatch, dude. So I'll probably do a video on when I install it when I get it. So, well, Yes, sir. Well, so you're getting a pre-made hatch. What yeah. what, dim what dimensions is the hatch going to be? And what are you using it's it for? Big. Is it storage? You using it for it's live well? Hatch. It's a very large hatch, actually. Hold on. I can tell you dimensions from when I sent on the mat. I got to actually look it up. It's very large. And it's... Uh, so I'm taking two hatches on the front of my boat and eliminating them and making it one big storage hatch. So right now, the one hatch is storage. The other one, I have my deep cycle batteries, which was a mistake. So I want to move them to the back of the boat and just make a big hatch up front for my tackle. I got to put the batteries back in the back. Moving them up front, I thought for some reason would be a good idea, but it wasn't. Hey Matt, can you guys hear us on can you guys hear us on Facebook right now? Yeah, we were we were watching we we just logged in and started watching YouTube a couple of minutes ago. We missed your comments. Okay. Yeah, you guys can still hear us. Right on. So the hatch is actually 23 inches wide by 30 inches long. So a very big hatch. But what I'm going to do is I'm replacing, I'm taking these two hatches. Like, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah. Of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get rid of all that with one big hatch for storage. Oh, dude, he's going to, he's going to knock that out of the park for you. Yeah, it's gonna be nice. Dude. You getting like the you getting like the air lifted ones? I mean, look how yeah, I'm gonna have to put those shocks on it for sure for how big of a hatch it is. I mean, I mean, look how tore up that is. I don't know how good you can see it. Right. But that's just a hot mess. So I'm trying to turn that into one big hatch. Then I figure why I got it all ripped out and I installed the hatch mat. I might as well get rid of the plywood that's up there, aluminum deck the rest of it, and put hydro turf on it. And then me and Tony are working on a deal with getting our boats wrapped. So I might just re redo my... It all started with having Matt uh, build a hatch, and now I'm about to rip my whole boat apart. And just. And then we went to Reservoir Boat Works, 
I mean, I'm, I'm just, my whole boat just needs, just gutting the whole thing out, dude. Like, I can't, it's not nice and clean like yours. Mine's a, it's a mess, dude. And I put it through hell. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the uh, hatch that Matt is building. And then I'm going to take it from there. That's, that's the first step. Matt says if you want the shocks, he'll throw them on there. And your hatch is done. Oh, it's done, dude. Yeah, it's done. I'm, I'm, I was, I was just, I was getting, I was waiting for you to finish talking so I could tell you, but your hatch is done. You know, I like to talk. Yeah. Dude, now I'm wondering, Matt, did you film any of this, dude? Because Sorry, we missed your comment on YouTube, dude. We're we're monitoring YouTube now, but uh, yeah, man. I wonder if Matt's got any of building my hatch on video because then I can like use his video, edit it into installing it on my boat. We could like hook it up, make a little collaboration video. But either way, Matt, I'll hit you up tomorrow. I'll shoot you, uh, shoot me an invoice. Let's settle up and let's get that in the mail so we can make that happen, man. I appreciate that was, it, man. That was like one of my things. I, uh, when I looked at putting like setting hatches in my boat, I was like, okay, I'm going to buy this hatch. I was like, all right, now I'm going to cut this giant hole in my boat. <laughs> and, and it better be right. <laughs> you don't, well, on the Johnny, on the Johnny, you could. You don't want to mess with the other boat, not the Ranger. Wait, so you might as well get that thing with the air shocks on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to talk to Matt tomorrow, man. Uh, uh, you know it's already going to be quality, dude. You know Matt's work, so it's going to be fire. So yeah. I can't wait. I'm excited like a kid on Christmas. So. God then, damn it. I'm, more, I'm almost excited about that as I am about this skateboarding contest that I got against 40 East Fishing. Can't wait. Can't wait. I'm going to... Uh, Man, look, I'm going to stop talking about it. Look, you got too much going on. You're just overwhelmed. Look, dude, bring it on, man. We could take it. We could, nah. Look, we'll find out this weekend. And then we're at the flea market this weekend. Uh, We're, we're there Saturday and Sunday, right? I'm, I'll be there for setup on Friday. Oh, I can't make Friday, but I'll be there Saturday with you. And, uh, I had a lot of stuff to give away, then I gave it all to Tony Schultz. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll find some stuff to burn, but I gave Tony Schultz a bunch of stuff because uh, he's my homie, and uh, he likes tinkering around with that kind of stuff. And I had a bunch of reels and stuff that needed work. Tony Tony uh, hooked them all up. Rob, did you see that new rig that Matt just finished? I did not. I have not seen the latest video, but I will watch it. I have not actually seen it either. I got to go tune into that after this. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably watch that tonight. It's a 1860 uh, just finished. It's a, it's a bad. A okay, I thought, it, I thought he said it's a big ass rig. It's a bad ass rig. <laughs> everything, uh, like everything, Matt makes is bad ass. So like, yeah. I saw the big ass, and I was like, okay, like he did something like being like 20 footer or something like that. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's probably bad ass. Hell yeah. I'm pretty sure it's probably bad ass. I know it's bad ass. I know it's bad ass. Did you watch? The last Bassmaster, I, like I've been, I've, I, I'm on the group text. I see Kevin and Paul and you and everybody talking about, it, but they didn't chime in very much. I'm busy at work, but uh, man, if you ask me, that was terrible to watch, dude. What? Hard to watch. The Bassmasters tournament, Toledo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What has a case? Have you seen the video that um? <laughs> Paul has entered the chat. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, yo. <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll say, Paul, did you watch Chris Aldane's video? So he went around to everybody's boat uh, looking at their electronics. Brian Smith, our buddy, you know, Potomac, Brian, Brian Smith, Maryland, $50,000 in electronics, dude. That's gnarly. Four. But that, like... I'm not trying to hate on, like, I'm the one that's, like, commenting. Like, I'm not against forward-facing sonar, but, like, where's the limit? Where's the limit? Like, use forward-facing sonar, but y'all got 17 transducers on your boat and, and eight different screens that are all linked together, and they're all bigger than the screen in my freaking living room. And I just, it's ridiculous. I kind of look at it like this, too. If you're a poor kid or even a middle class kid and you want to be a professional bass fisherman you can't even like how you can't like there was no way that I, even now I'm not getting a hundred thousand dollar boat with fifty thousand uh, dollars no. of, of electronics on it I can't do it now 
So there's like no way that I would ever be able to be a pro bass fisherman because I can't afford that. Not with all the, not with all the elect. I mean, I do. Not only was it, not only was it next to like near impossible unless you owned your own business before. Now you have to be able to afford thirty k, forty five thousand dollars in electronics to put on your boat to be competitive. After you buy a ninety thousand dollar boat, if you want, yeah, ninety thousand dollar boat probably comes with right with a lot of that. To be fair, but still, I mean, we're just talking buku amounts of money. So it's not like you can. So you're like a younger kid. You want to be a quarterback in the NFL. You don't have to spend a hundred thousand dollars on stuff to compete to be a quarterback in the NFL. You need a football and you need to learn how to throw it, right? But in our sport, you can't compete unless you're you. That's that's not right. It shouldn't be like that, if you ask me. But that's just my opinion. I don't know. I don't know. It's not. I'm 50 years old. It's not like I'm gonna go be a pro fisherman, anyways. I do my thing. I do my weekend stuff. So, I'm but not. I'm it's bad. like it's not like hate towards it. It's like I'm really sick and tired of listening to the people that refuse to admit the fishing, the fishing that it leaves behind. In my opinion, oh, well, they don't just bite your lure if you throw it in front of them, like dog. How many of those fishermen would have been floating in the middle of that lake, pinpointing a jerkbait in front of their face, no matter whether they eat it or not, if you wouldn't have forward-facing sonar? None of you. It's just, it's bull crap. It's not fun to watch. It's cool. I think it's cool. Technology's wild. Competitively, I don't think it belongs. Have an, have an electronics uh, circuit if you want to do that. I want to see people, like, jump at dams and, like, dragging that boat through the woods and all. I know you can't do that. I want to see jet boats, and I want to see going way up yeah. the river where nobody else goes. I think, th like, that would be cool. It's just not how it is. That's not tournament bass fishing. You know, that's not what it is. Um, and it is what it is. But I think something like that, It I like watching stuff like that. I want to see, like, John Cox back in the swamp, lily pads everywhere throwing a pro. I feel like I views just, brings I, I, I feel like views brings money and if I know somebody's gonna be flying up a river in a jet boat jumping over dams and shit, I'm gonna be watching it a lot more than watching freaking Brandon Polinick stare at a sixteen inch graph screen four hours a day. Four hours? It's like twelve hours. But dude, I'm telling you right now, it hit about freaking five minutes and I was like, nope. I don't even want to watch this anymore. They can literally tell you when they're about to get a bite. Like, oh, get ready. Here it comes. It's about to bite it. Got it. Like, good Lord. <laughs> There's no even guess. All right. Like, uh, Look, Rob, you need to cough up 10, and I'll cough up 10. Matt says for 20K, we can buy Neptune. What is? Oh, really? 10 G. We can buy Neptune, and then we can hang with the big boys. I got to get my porno career uh, going uh, to make that kind of money. No, I'm just kidding. Dude. 10K a piece. I don't know, dude. That is a badass boat. It is a badass boat. It is definitely, dude. It is everywhere. It's worth every single penny to somebody. I just don't got that coin. Yeah, I ain't got it. I'll tell you what, though. If I were. It's like, what could Neptune have on it? Could I put, could I put a 50 on Neptune? Oh, look. It's John. Here's, here's Paul saying John boats suck. Man, screw Paul. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> Could you put a fifty on the back of Neptune? Suck, Hold on, we gotta we gotta we splat. Paul effing batters talking shit. Paul, Paul full of too much negativity. Paul's got Paul's that guy that will have fifty thousand dollars of electronics on his boat and live scoop. Ain't you, Paul? Is he saying anything? I can't see what he's saying. I just want to know if Neptune could take a 50 on the back of it. Uh, I'm so curious what Paul said. If, uh, John, John Boat Life is cool, Paul. Show Tin up. Boat. Oh, the John Boat Life is a life. Yeah, Paul. Man, come on. Even even Greg Hall will admit that. And Greg Hall don't like to admit anything. Oh, uh, Matt says you could put a 92-stroke Yamaha on the back of that all day. Damn. Bro, could you imagine running, you imagine running that? Oh. Evan has a 90 on his aluminum boat, and yes, I it that's insane. It would be, yeah, that would be so, dude, that would be such a nice boat. I'm about to sell the Ranger and buy that. That would be badass, dude. Sell the Ranger, put the, sell the Ranger, put like a 60 on the back of it or something. Uh, Neptune, that would be bad. Yeah, with a jack plate on the back and just freaking run that thing. 
Hell yeah. I That'd be sick. Jack played on it already, bro. Mm. Probably, yeah, I'm sure, probably. Yeah. It just got to be rated for a 90. Did you see one rod, one reel uh, from the Guggen Squad? Uh, he's done. He's not making fishing videos no more. You see, he put a video out this morning. I guess he's doing something else, but he had like a farewell. Said he's been doing like 12 years. 1 million point six subscribers. Uh, he said he had reached his goal. And uh, he's moving on to other things. I think he's still <laughs> fishing. But uh, he the one rod, one reel YouTube channel. Paul he's says fishing. good. Yeah. Dude, his sister's hot. You ever watch the videos? He got his hot ass sister. How do we even go to that? Because if you ever seen his videos and you saw his sister, you would understand why. <laughs> I need a beer. <laughs> Either way, uh, one ride, one reel said he's uh he's not done with YouTube, and I don't think he's done with fishing. But that that channel is uh he's done with that. That channel is going to be no more, at least from what I saw today. Wow. And then Brandy Blockett is like losing his brain right now. Brandy Blockett's coming on Bass and Beer. Brandy Blockett is mad as hell. No, he's not. I'm just saying that to set Paul off. No, we should definitely have more. <laughs> Randy Blockett told something I told you so right now. I told you so. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Randy Blockett's losing his mind. Chris Aldane is filming $50,000 in electronics on people's boats. I mean, it's just it, the whole world is uh, upside down right now, dude. The whole yes. fishing world is just is what it is, man. Is what it is. Hey. Don't hate. <laughs> little jo it. Little John says his sister is hot. I will say. Brian says got to keep. Thank you, Little John. See, he know. <laughs> she is, dude. Brian John says got to keep up with the times or get left behind. That's true. Very true. You already Very know where Paul stands on this. Yeah, we know where Paul stands. Miles is rocking two scopes this season, but didn't want to pay to get his lower serviced. Didn't Miles have like a twelve foot? <laughs> now, now he's rocking two scopes on a fiberglass boat. Is that what's happening? <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Matt says, I'm about to be the new Guggen Squad member. I've been there and done that. It's bound to happen. No, he's probably, he's, he's not lying, dude. He's probably, probably. Yeah, yeah, he might actually be one of the members, dude. Yeah, so what else we got? What Paul say? I anything, Paul anything is possible, but I don't know much about Guggen Squad. As far as I knew about Guggen, like, I haven't heard much about him recently. I like John B. John B. makes some good videos. If you watch his videos. John really B.'s good. OG. Yeah, his videos are really good, dude. He makes them like a movie. It's like you're watching a movie, dude. It's kind of... And he does like this... Uh, he'll go up river and travel down river and like camp out and like makes a whole movie about it. It's really cool, dude. John B.'s stuff is really, really pretty sick, dude. Well, one ride, one reel. I don't know. He's like a local dude around this area. So like, you know, like, I don't know. But, uh... John B. Parrot, uh, I watch their stuff. Their stuff's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Miles bought a new lower. Yeah. Miles, what'd that lower run you? Oh. Uh, oh, Paul, damn it. Oh, that coffee's cold as hell, dude. That's nasty. That's disgusting. Ugh. Uh, I don't even understand why Americans like iced coffee. I had, it helped me quit drinking alcohol, dude. I drank coffee. I, I got addicted to al uh, coffee to get off the alcohol. <laughs> if that makes any kind of sense. Every time I wanted a drink, I just went and made a coffee. So then I got addicted to the caffeine, but it made me not want to get a drink of alcohol. He said it was cheaper Which than fun? rebuilding his lower just to buy an uh, uh used or refurbished one which i i fully believe that what's miles got now what are you rocking miles i got F you it's it that evan like rude that. evan rude 150 like uh bombardier or something on what we well, got a nitro like what we well, got a skeeter what is it no it's a uh my goodness Clint has one. It's not a nitro. It's the old boat. It's a Stratus. It's a Stratus. It's a Stratus. Clint's got a really nice Stratus, dude. Like really nice. Clint's old Stratus. No, all his old one. What's his new boat? Oh no, it's a nitro. Yeah, that's a nitro. No more. No, his new boat, the nitro, is badass. Yeah. What's Wayne? What's Wayne and them got? Wayne and Wayne. They got a nitro too, don't they? Uh, yeah, that's a nitro. That's nice too, dude. And that's Johnny Morris though. 
It's a nice looking boat though. Nice looking boat. Speaking of Wayne and Wayne, we need to have them on the show, dude. Where they been? And Vintage Crab House and Wayne and Wayne. That would be our episode right there. Mm hmm. That would be a good episode. Uh, yeah. First, we have, no, nah, have them both on together. Wayne and Wayne and Vintage Crab House at the same time. That's insane. That would be cool as shit. <laughs> Hmm. Probably been echoing this whole time and I just fixed it. But, you know, that's just how our podcast goes. It's just a screw up all the time. No, I accidentally unplugged my mic. Can you hear me now? No, I can hear you now, but apparently my mic's been echoing the whole time. But that just goes right along with how our entire Tackle Talk Tuesday is gone. You got called into work, so we were late, and then the mics didn't work, then the software didn't work. Then we missed Matt's comment. <laughs> we are like low budget live. I'm blaming it on ADHD. I agree. I think I'll unplug my mic again. I can oh, hear you. Okay, cool. I was trying to grab these stickers. If I can get them out of here. God damn it. I'm a mess, sir. I got too much crap on my desk. I ought to clean it off for real. Mr. Paul F. and Batters gave me some Epic Eric stickers, dude. She's thick. You like that, don't you, Chad? Yeah. She's thick and you said Epic Eric. Tug life. Tug life and she's thick go together like this, dude. Oh, shit. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix this audio or not. They're saying it's even worse now. We might as well just jump off, dude. It's like almost 9 o'clock. I got to eat some dinner, man. Good recommendation if you want to end it off on a good note for Tackle Chip weekend. Throw it, get out there. and Man, I would take a jig, and I would take a jerk bait, and I would take a crank bait. All right. Paul says it's better now. Let's well, see. Matt says... Matt says John B is badass. I know Rob Turkla. Personally, obviously, I built a boat with him. I'm still working. The angle Guggen Squad is dropping like flies. Don't be surprised if you see me repping Guggen Squad by the end of the year. Good for you, Matt. That would be That's tight, man. Good for you, dude. That's huge. Hell yeah, dude. dude. Big, big moves. Big moves. Hey, when you up in the Guggen Squad, don't forget about us, uh, you know, Riverboat Rob and Bass and Bear, man. Like, you know, remember, remember us little guys when you up there hanging out with uh, Rob Turkler and John B. And, uh, what you got? You got, uh, what is it? It's Lunkers, um, John B., Lunkers, Parrot, I think his name is. Uh, one rod, one reel, and there's there's another guy that I'm forgetting on the Guggen squad that's really popular. Uh, damn it, can't remember who he is now. Me personally, I'm a John B fan. I like John B stuff. I like all that river. I like all that river fishing, man. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. The other river stuff. I like. I like watching a lot of the tidal stuff just because it's, you know, relative to us. Um, but a lot of those big fish and the big bags come from the lakes. <coughs> the live scoping in lakes, Paul Batter stuff, man. Yeah, Paul Batter style. Paul Batter style. Paul says a bunch of googs. <laughs> you know Paul. We're a bunch of googans. <laughs> Paul is Paul. Look, if Love Matt if, if Matt is rep if Matt is repping googan, I'll rep googan. That's right. And look, when Matt up at Guggen and you see some Riverboat Rob on there, don't hate. Congratulate. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. You know Paul. Paul. Oh, Pete. man. Pete, it's definitely a step in the right direction, brother. Yeah. What What Pete? What Pete say? It was like Bud Light getting re-endorsed by the UFC. It was like it was a big, massive step in the correct direction. Wait a minute. What did Pete say? I can't <laughs> Pete says Chad that. likes Guggen now. Oh well, Pete. Look, Pete is look. Pete's favorite bait is a Berkeley Chapo. Just called you out, Pete. 
So, come on, man. The God. Berkeley Chapo is his go-to bait. Him and Dan. Matter of fact, Dan so I called both y'all out. Martin it's says I'm Berkeley out of the Chapo. Guggen closet. <laughs> Berkeley Chapo. Pete and Dan. All day, man. All day. And you know Chad is a huge Berkeley fan. So Berkeley's my favorite. Dude, Berkeley makes... Well, now... No, we can't say too much. But I heard they're discontinuing. Like, I, Berkeley's doing some dumb stuff, dude. That's all I can say. Hey, thanks, Matt. We appreciate it, brother. We appreciate you tuning in. We hope that uh, we hope to hear from you more. Hey, Matt, I'm going to settle up with you tomorrow, man. I'll text you. Oh, my, my, my camera died, dude. Oh, I thought you just ended the show just like that. <laughs> right. At, it did seem like on cue. <laughs> <laughs> that I sounded like I was ending it, and then, uh, but that was not what happened. Dude. I'm telling you right now, dude, you got to get rid of that GoPro. Uh, dude, send me some recommendations on what I should be using. Um, Dude, I'm telling you, the camera I have, I paid like $70 for it, and this thing is a hammer, and it's got a wide view lens. What camera is it? There you go. Uh, yeah, it's the, the it's a, the uh, in a GoPro, it's a Kyo Razor. Kyo Razor Pro. Uh, it's the camera when we're sitting in front of the computers yeah. looking forward. That's is that round. Yeah. yeah That's a very, ass. very nice camera for the price point. Like, I've had no issues with it at all. The color correction, uh, the autofocus, and the color or the color balance correction, autofocus, and the different lenses on it are phenomenal. Uh, my favorite camera was the GoPro up until it just continued to fail me, and then... Like, I get it. Yeah. There was no point. I was like, I have to go to something else. Dude, I'm pumped that Matt said my hatch is done. Yeah, bro. Just like that. It was pretty fast, too. He hooked me up. Gave me, like, 30% off, dude. Cool. Matt's a good dude, man. He's a real good dude, man. He does quality work. You already know. I ain't got to tell you. You got, you got trick 10 parts on your boat already. So, you already oh, know. Oh, yeah. Uh, that And that know. mount's been on there for a couple of years now. It's been... It's been kicked, hit. It's been caught on sticks and branches, and yeah, it's solid. The only thing that bothers me now is that my hatch is done. I got a lot of work ahead of me. I got to move batteries to the back, rewire everything, rip the front deck out, put the hatch in, aluminum the front deck, and then hydro turf it. So, Riverboat Rob is about to be busy with that. I'll make a video on it. Let's see. Rob, what's the hot baits this weekend? This weekend? What's the hot baits this weekend? I'll be throwing a jig this weekend. Throwing I'll the throw jig. I'll be probably. We said jig and a, we said we said jig and a jerk bait, right? I would probably take a crank bait with me too, dude. I would take a DT six with me too. I'd to be honest. I'd throw a flat side. I would throw a UMA yeah, flat, flat side. side. Yeah, so I'm not gonna get. I would like uh, to hit the bang it off the bottom, bang it off the bottom. And uh, anything on the bottom right now. I don't know. The weather is so crazy. It was like 56 degrees the last two days. Right. But then it's been cold at night. Then we had to fool. It was in the 60s today. Right. I, 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 a crankbait, jerkbait, and a jig. That's what I would take. Yeah. Crankbait, jerkbait, jig. Yep. I mean, obviously, I'll have a, a swim bait with me. But I'm just saying, like, we're talking conventional crankbait, jerkbait, jig. And pull back I'm probably not like throwing a full size but, uh, football. I would probably throw a finesse style jig right now. That's my personal preference. Put that away. That's a great color. Stop it. Uh, you can't go with a you like a little bit of red. This time of year is a phenomenal thing. A little bit of red, a lot of red. Doesn't matter. It's a good red. thing. Now that's the uh, that's the Denny Brower flipping jig. No, yeah. I think that's the dirty. See, Paul jig. says it was Paul says it was forty three yesterday, and he's probably out in the GP. So I mean, that's cold. Forty three water temp. Yeah, I'm definitely taking the jig then. Yeah, or uh, a soft plastic. I don't want to say which one. Uh, do do some bottom dragging. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay, he said he said out uh, on the flats. Have any grace. Hey, Paul, and if I'm taking a crankbait, Paul's not going to like that I say this, so I'm going to say I'm taking Don't do hot, it. Must hot mustard, dude. Hot mustard. Yeah, hot mustard. I like those fire colors. I Brown back. Chartreuse with a brown back. Oh, I don't think I have any fire colors up here with me right now. They're all down like in the little... Actually, that's a lie. Fire tiger? Oh. A lot of juice right there, dude. 
You better be You don't oh, see those none of this. Paul brung over the other day. I took Paul brung all those over. He there. might have. Yeah. Balsa beats, right? UMA. UMA, baby. Yeah. Check it out. I've seen them in person. Fire, dude. That's a good spring color. Couple good spring colors that I'll be careful with showing you guys. Ooh. Good baits. Pumped to get my hatch tomorrow, dude. Yeah, well, man. I, guess it, I ain't gonna get it tomorrow. But uh, UMA Lure Company, man, they make a fire bait this time of year and the late fall. Them freaking balsa wood cranks definitely shine through, especially a nice, finely tuned balsa wood crank bait by Mr. Tyler Hawthorne. So I got to ask you this, Chad, because I haven't seen it in a while. And it was the coolest video ever. You used to have a video of UMA lures in the pool going through wood like it was nothing. I think it was like Tony's dad's house or something. He, you guys filmed it at. What happened to that video, dude? It's still up or It's still up there on YouTube. We still got it up here in the feed. I was going to take that and make a commercial for UMA lures out of that footage. Well, we're hundred, we're one hundred percent going to go back and make another one of those videos this year, um, including we're. So that's what I'm looking. I need to get everybody together as kind of a plan here, but I want to go back to the to uh, the Clearwater area, and I want to do some filming with the crankbaits. The Clearwater area. <laughs> with the with the crankbaits, uh some of our bass munitions, soft plastics, and uh yeah, get some film back there because I just think it's really unique and we've developed new techniques and we owe it to our sponsors to give them some good footage like that. So that footage was badass, dude. That was badass. It's gr it's it's great footage. Yeah. It's great footage, but with times changing, we also have updated baits and updated plastics. Dude, I, I might have picked up a new sponsor in the Riverboat Rob side. I shouldn't really say anything just yet, but Charm City Skate Park. Jason Chapman. Look, wait till I win the kickflip contest. Then I'm really going to get that Charm City Skate Park sponsorship. Uh, me and Jason go way back. But uh, don't be surprised to see Charm City Skate Park sponsoring your boy Riverboat Rob. And That'll of course, be tight. Some beer radio. And uh, shit, man. Shit. We, we we doing things because uh, also you just picked up a new uh, sponsor for the show, Recovery House, right? Yeah, uh, Bel Air Recovery. And I don't know if my brother Pete's still on, but we might be able to get mom up in there because my mom is a recovering addict. I'm not ashamed to say that. Um, you know, it's a sickness and it's a problem and she needs help. Yes, sir. And, uh, and, you know, like, I had an alcohol problem myself. Now, it's not wrong with having a beer here and there, but, I mean, things can escalate quickly and it could turn into a problem. So, drink responsibly. It's a, uh, yeah, drink responsibly. Don't condone alcoholism or uh, no, drug addiction. My and uh, if you have something that you're struggling with, go seek help. And our friends at Bel Air, uh, Bel Air Rehab Center, uh, straight across from the festival over there are uh, they're great people and they're there to help you. So uh, please reach out to them if you feel that you're struggling with any of those things. Hey, man, I've been there too, man. You can reach out to Riverboat Rob too. We could talk about it because I went through my own struggles personally, my own self. And it, it wasn't easy and it was not fun. So I actually talked to Chad a lot when I was going through it and he helped me out a lot too. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, yeah. we, talked, we talked a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it, man. It's 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 tough, man. It's tough. It, it things escalate quickly, just like uh, when you get into uh, crankbaits. It escalates quickly. Next thing you know, you got nine hundred freaking crankbaits. <laughs> You're buying two hundred dollar wig awards. Hundred and ten percent, dude. <laughs> Absolutely, one hundred and ten percent. So you know how it go. But you hey, go, man, you go dude, from you go from one to one hundred. I got to get some dinner tonight, man. It's been a busy, busy day. I've been under the weather, believe it or not. I'm actually under the weather. I've not been feeling that well. And then, of course, work is calling me. And, you know, uh, hey. I, I plan you, on dude. fishing this weekend. I plan on being on the river this weekend, hopefully. It'd be nice. I got to get my reels back from Jerry as soon as I get my reels back from Jerry and get all spooled up, dude. This he's game got on. All your reels? You took everything? No, he's got half my reels, but, uh, you know. 
Uh, I ain't packing up half my boat. It just doesn't feel right. No, nah, I don't feel right. It's half ass. Right. <laughs> I have to boat it half ass. Shoot. Look, Chad, man, I love you, man. Hey, Paul. Look, dude. I didn't mean to bust your ball so hard, but come on, man. Relax, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, I love, I love you, man. dog. We'll catch you guys later. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in tonight. We will see you guys at... Uh, actually, before everybody leaves... We will be at the uh, Middle River Bass Flea Market in Essex uh, Saturday and Sunday at the uh, Methodist Church. What Methodist Church is it? I don't have the it's thing open in front of me right road. now. Back River Neck Road. Back River Neck Road Methodist Church. Up past the food line. I think you go past the food line and it's up on your right, if I remember correctly. Uh, just head down Back River Neck Road. You can't miss it. They got big signs out and everything when they do it. But not only us, though. Before you, before you finish, Chad, me, you, Paul's going to be there. Oh, yeah. The whole gang, you gang, gang. The whole gang's going to be there. We're all going to be there hanging out. It was Martin Payne, uh, 40 East Fishing. Like, oh, uh, yeah, dude. Like, you don't want to miss this. It's like the biggest thing. That it's going to be a great time. We're going to be, uh, we'll have everything promoted up on the page tomorrow morning, and we're going to keep on keeping on. We appreciate you guys. Let's go.